everyone, and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, uh, community members and veterans fill the second floor courtroom at the Hopkins County Courthouse Thursday to recognize Vietnam Army veterans Rick Flannery and Jerry Hanna of Sulphur Springs, Air Force veteran Earl Stubblefield of Bogota, and Vietnam Army veteran Marvin uh, Sherney of uh, Mineola who have been selected to participate in DFW Veterans Honor Flight. The send-off event on Thursday included pledge to the flags, singing of the national anthem by Sulphur Springs High School choir student Hope Williams, and played by the SSHS Jazz Band. Korean Army veteran Clayton McGraw retold the Johnny Cash favorite, that ragged old flag. First Baptist Church pastor Dr. Jeff Graves recited uh, Psalm 100 and offered a prayer of thanks for those who have served and those who continue to serve. County Judge Robert Newsom offered a closing prayer. A recorded military salute featuring each branch of service provided by Lonnie Fox was played. The four veterans uh, departed for uh, Washington, D.C. Friday morning for a whirlwind two days of events in Washington, D.C. That honor flight will be returning on Saturday evening. The Sulphur Springs ISD is inviting all Hopkins County veterans, uh, current service members, and their spouses to a reception followed by a patriotic program on Monday, Veterans Day, at Sulphur Springs High School. There will be a reception in the SSHS library, and that will begin at 12 noon. The program begins at 1 p.m. in the main high school gym, and it will feature special performances by the Sulphur Springs High School Band and much more. With Sulphur Springs as part of the Chris's Healthcare Center, we now have a new family nurse practitioner. Let's meet Lydia Amarte. This is Lydia Amarte. Hi. And she comes to us uh, just very recently. In fact, she starts seeing patients this Monday. Okay. Lydia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Miss Enola. Tell us what you do and what you will be doing here in Sulphur Springs. Well, my name is Lydia Amarty, and I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I'll be seeing patients on Monday, November 4th, at Christus Health in one of the clinics here at Sulphur Springs. Okay. I'm originally from Ghana, a small country in West Africa, but I've been in the DFW area for the past about 17 years or so. Okay. Um, I've been a family nurse practitioner for the past six years. Okay. And I've been a nurse for about 11 years. And I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm ready to see patients and come by and see us. She, as Brad has mentioned, will be in Dr. Coker's clinic. That's correct. Okay. 111 Medical Circle. Okay, and we'll welcome her. Uh, we patients of Dr. Coker's will wel <laughs> welcome her. And um, why you went into this now, of course, many people, many young women are attracted to the nursing uh, medical field. And so you were, you were the same, but didn't really have a specialty area at first? No, actually, I'll say I started off... Um, working in a nursing home as a CNA and I worked my way up, became a ner registered nurse okay. and over the years while I was a registered nurse in the hospital in a, one of the big hospitals in the DFW area, I started precepting patients, um, new nurses and um, they were kind of excited with my knowledge and background and everything else and they kind of um, encouraged me to go ahead and become a nurse practitioner because they were amused by the no kind of knowledge that I did give to new um, nurses and stuff. And so mm -hmm. they encouraged me to kind of look into the nurse practitioner field, in, which I did because one of my main goals is to educate people, not only patients, but p people in general, and kind of let them be involved in their care. So I looked into it as I went to school, became a nurse practitioner, and I'm loving it so far. <laughs> Great. Well, I've learned two things from your 
uh, talk, our chat this morning, and I don't know the uh, meaning of precept. So, so, well, precepting is basically more like guiding people into any kind of field, basically letting them shadow you and okay. kind of like um, sharing the knowledge that you have in any kind of field. So it can be nursing, it can be teaching, it can be any kind of field. So basically, it's more like sharing the knowledge that you have in any kind of field. So in the field of nursing, we use a lot of preceptors with okay. new graduate nursing be nurses because mainly when you do that, it kind of lets them... Um, integrate into the field okay. more smoothly because nursing school kind of it's a little bit more different than the real actual nursing okay so sure okay we kind of help them integrate into the real nursing world okay well and the other thing is a family nurse practitioner which is what you are and but that involves teaching yes so as family nurse practitioners <clears throat> we do teach a lot we do want our patients to know what they're taking, what kind of disease process they're going through, and what the outcomes may be. So in that case, they will be more involved, and it, it kind of helps a whole lot with compliance. And so patients are more willing to um, be compliant if they understand what's really going on. So it goes a long way with disease processes and it kind of helps patients out because sure. we see better outcomes if we do educate our patients a lot. Well, you, anyone may come to you with a new problem in their life and so this may actually represent a lifestyle change. Yes. And it just, they can't get that just overnight or in one visit. No. So that's why I'm very keen on education. I do want uh, my patients to be really involved. And in, so in that case, they'll get better with due course. And in time, they'll get better and we will see better outcomes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, oh, I know that you studied in the Metroplex area in Texas. Yes. I actually start, started with... Navarro College in Corsicana. I got my associate degree over there. And then I went to UTA. I got a bachelor's degree. And then I went on to Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls. And I got my undergraduate nursing degree. That's my BSN. And then finally ended up at Texas Women's University in Dallas. And I got my family nurse practitioner. Um, and then worked as a family nurse practitioner for about four years and then I went back and got my doctoral degree in okay. nursing. Okay. And now you live very close to us. Yes. I, I do live in Greenville at the moment and um, I'm very happy and proud to be part of the Christus Health family system here and I'm very happy to be seeing patients in the coming days. Okay. Well, we're very pleased and blessed to have the Christus system here in Sulphur Springs. And Brad, we were counting up the family nurse practitioners in our clinics. Yeah, I believe we came up with six. Okay. I, I listed, I believe six is the number for just family nurse practitioners. But uh, there are other types. There are. Uh, we have one in uh, orthopedics. Uh, we have one in urology. Okay. Um, but, you know, our, our <clears throat> one of our big goals is to meet the needs of this community. And uh, I'm also proud to announce we have another nurse practitioner who will be starting November 11th okay. as well. And hopefully we'll be able to bring her into here. Okay, good. Uh, and, you know, right now we're just, Christmas is growing, so, but the community is as well. And so we want to meet the needs of not just our patients, but future patients. Uh, so... Sulphur Springs, Hopkins County, surrounding areas can come here instead of having to travel out. Uh, and, uh, you know, a few months or so ago, I brought in Dr. Cross. Uh, and so we're, it's just an ever-changing uh, platform out there. It's just ever-growing. We are so pleased that we don't have to go. There, there are less and less reasons for us to go elsewhere. Yes, there are. So with the uh, sports medicine being added That's and right. um, all kinds of phases. Right. And, you know, I remember... <clears throat> 
of course, this dates me, but back when I was in high school and whatnot, I remember you had to drive to Paris mm-hmm. to go for sports medicine. That's right. And uh, that becomes quite a bit of a day, actually. 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. Uh, and that's all right here, right now, on, this on is Saturday mornings. It's a wonderful step. Well, and I'm going to ask a very, very rudimentary question. And it'll probably, you'll get to repeat a lot of things, but why do we not have just doctors and nurses? Well, Why do we have nurse practitioners? That's a good question. Okay. <laughs> that's a rudimentary. Uh, you know, I think there's a need for, for, for both kinds. I think nurse practitioners uh, bring an element of, of health care okay. that uh, not necessarily doctors can uh as as lydia was talking about earlier uh, the teaching aspect Mm -hmm. um not that doctors cannot teach but it's really instilled into nurse practitioners to teach their patients uh as they're going so that like she said as they they understand what they take and in our conversation before we came on air she was saying you know the, the, the goal is to not have a patient have to go to the er for every little thing if a patient understands what's going on in their treatment, their medication, their daily lives, uh, because you know ERs are, are more expensive to go to than to a provider, uh, this helps them not only economically but also it helps them from uh, worry. Um, and uh, you know, so I think that's what <clears throat> nurse practitioners bring in to this that doctors do not. Plus, it gives us a chance to have be able to see more patients. Um, by having more staff on hand to see them. Well, for example, just uh, this happens all the time, but when it happens to you, it gets to be big, world-shattering news. You get a diagnosis of diabetes. So your life has to change, your eating habits have to change, and you have to start worrying about various things and being aware of various things. And I know one person who's benefited in a great way from from the knowledge imparted at their doctor visits by a nurse practitioner. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, um, the way the approach, like Mr. Brad was saying, it's a little different with nurses and doctors, but at the same time, the most important thing is that they bring the same thing to the table. I mean, the focus is a little different, but... Um, nur- nurses focus more on teaching uh, doctors as well but at the same time um, when we have nurse practitioners and doctors all together we learn from each other and it, it creates a big um, emphasis and a, a, a big um, growth on um, all aspects and mainly knowledge base because doctors have a great base of knowledge and they do share it out and when you have nurse practitioners learning from doctors okay. um, it helps the patients out in the sense that we are able to share knowledge across the board and in turn it creates a great impact on the patients so even though uh, we have doctors and we have nurse practitioners um, Everything comes together at the end of the day because doctors have a great deal of knowledge which they do share out to nurse practitioners and it helps us out, help the patient out and at the end of the day we have great outcomes and the most important part of everything is the patient. So basically all we do, both doctors and nurses, is patient-centered care. Okay. So... And That's the way really great. Like, you know, there, there, there used to be a stigma of, well, I, I need to see a doctor. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to see a nurse practitioner. I need, I need to see a doctor. doctor. That stigma is going away. It's yes. not all gone completely. But, you know, my wife yesterday saw a nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember the last time I saw a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I see nurse practitioners. Mm-hmm. Um, Thankfully, that stigma is going away. Okay. Nurse practitioners uh, uh, sometimes are easier to get in to see. Uh, your your weight is minimal mm-hmm. uh, versus a doctor who's, you know, the doctors we have here, with the exception of Dr. Rowe, Dr. Cross, who are new, have been here for a long time. Uh, Dr. Bachman, Dr. Kutrell, they have a tremendous uh, patient panel. Mm-hmm. They're very busy. They're, yes. they're full. 
Uh, and so it may be, it may take you longer to see, for example, Dr. Kutra, Dr. Coker, same way, very full. Nurse practitioners usually don't have as full of a panel, okay. and you can get in to see them quicker. quicker. It's it's great, uh, and we're running close on time, but we are very, very happy to have our Krista system here at work for us in Sulphur Springs, Hopkins County. Well, we're excited to be here. Um, you know, I've been here my entire life. It's a great facility to work for. In sports, the number five ranked Wildcats basketball team officially began practice for the season on Wednesday. I talked with Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta on Friday. And, uh, you know, it's that, that time of the year. We've been in the gym for quite a while, but just to, to really get to stay after and start implementing some, some things that we're going to uh, try to do this season and getting our culture right and, you know, putting our team together is a, a real special time. Now, you lost a lot last year, leading scorer, a great defensive ball player, your tallest guy, I've met some others, but uh, uh, you've got some, a good nucleus coming back and some nice young guys. Um, absolutely. Uh, replacing Keiston Willis, you know, the school's all-time leading scorer, um, just a guy that can go get you a bucket any time is going to be difficult. Uh, Xavier Cork, who is our um, overall MVP of our district, who was just such a force and just really grew as a player um, all four years here. And then Jeremiah Rowland, who was the defensive MVP of our district. So those are going to be three guys that you just can't replace. Um, and we're not going to try to replace them, but we're going to try to do some different things with some younger guys. And um, I really like our group. Um, this might be the best group I've had sharing the basketball wise and we've really shared it in the past really well so I really like the, the balance attack this group has um, we're not as long or as big as we have been in the past couple of years but I think we can apply a little bit more pressure and do some things so so it might look a little different um, than the years past teams but uh, you know we, we feel really good about going into the season we remember uh, Grayson McClure we remember uh, your two big guys inside Cameron Kahn and uh, also Day Day Hall and uh, and uh, you know, plus uh, those those Lamadric Johnson and uh, Boo Wilkerson, and and uh, I'm sure there's others. Yes. So uh, um, Day Day and Cameron, you know, those are two of the best big men in uh, all of 5A, 6A high school basketball. Um, they're a, a force to, to to be reckoned with and can do some things. They're inside out guys. Um, Grayson McClure's really gotten where he's shooting the ball really well. But not only a shooter, he does the little things right. Um, we talk about being the 95 percent. Uh, what do you do 95% of the time you don't have the ball? Um, you know, being able to, to control the game rather than just shooting. Uh, Boo Wilkerson, who was newcomer of our district last year, is, he's, he's gotten really good and he keeps growing. And um, to me, he's kind of a dark horse of our team. Not many people know who he is. And I think he has a chance to be really special. And then LaModric uh, Johnson, he might be the, the first true point guard I've had here. I'm just a, a true. I've had to kind of sub in some guys at point guard, like Keystone's kind of a combo guard. Some different guys have been combo. Um, but he is uh, the epitome of just a, a point guard, sees the floor, floor general, um, really great at facilitating and doing some of those things. So to me, that's why it's a, a complete balance attack. You have those guys. And we're excited about Justin Hare. He's growing a ton. Hun. Um, he's crashing the boards, playing above the rim. Um, and that's just to mention a few guys. We still have some other guys coming along, some borderline guys that we're hoping step up. So um, it's exciting. And that's what scrimmage is for. Uh, you uh, want to look at these guys and make those tough decisions on who stays on JV or who moves up to your varsity. Yes, that just gives us a, a time to evaluate. And um, just during practice right now, we have 12 guys uh, that practice with the varsity every day and some JV, other JV true guys stay up and give us some looks. Um, you know, we could keep anywhere from seven to, to those 12. And uh, I don't want to keep guys that aren't going to play and grow. Some guys will have to be sophomores and JVs on, uh, or juniors on JV, um, but we do that so it doesn't hinder their growth, that they're still able to, to get better day in and day out. And, um, you know, it's, it's up in the air right now. Now your first scrimmage, uh, about a, a week or so? Yes, so we're going to go down to McKinney Boyd and get to see my, my buddy Jeremy right. Josie, former Wildcat uh, coach. Um, we're going to go scrimmage them and uh, Frisco Liberty. That's going to be the first one, so kind of a um, three-way scrimmage there. And then that Tuesday we're going to go to Mesquite Poteet. 
and scrimmage, Mesquite Petit and Longview. So two really tough uh, scrimmages and kind of just a different brand of basketball, some zone. You'll see a point zone in there, a one three one, and then some guys that are going to press. So uh, we try to find a uh, happy medium where we see a little bit of everything, you know, going into the season. Uh, you opened the season against a really good Decatur team. I think they're ranked in Class 4A. And, but we're number five. I, I, you may not want to talk about that much. No, uh, I, I do actually. Um, to the fact that um, it's it's really humbling, um, and it's something we're really proud of. And I know rankings don't mean anything, but to have your um, team get state recognized every year that you didn't just have one good team but you've built a, a program and year in and year out we consider you one of the top teams to me is something really special um, and that's a testament to our kids just coming in working hard every single day and those younger kids buying into the system um, so you know it's something we don't shy about um, but it doesn't mean anything either it's just a, kind of a, a, a glory for us and um, some publicity for our program uh, but then again, you know, uh, everybody has to get to work. And um, at the end of the day, those don't really mean a whole lot. So yeah, kind of put a target on your back a little bit. Well, you do have Decatur. That'll be an a, 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 a event that you've been a part of, I think, for the last three years. Yes, um, the North Crowley Cowtown Showdown. Some of the best teams in the state of Texas will be there. Um, Decatur's a really, really good team. Uh, they were in the semifinals in 4A last year, and I think they just lost one kid. So they'll be really good. Um, they'll move the ball as fundamental as a team that you'll see, really well coached. Um, so there'll be a, a good challenge for us. Uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit of a size advantage, but we really have to work defensively um, to slow down their shooters and all the actions that they do run. So um, we'll definitely have our hands full. And people have saw, I'm sure, already circled the day to the first home game. It looks like Pleasant Grove coming right. in. Yes, we got Pleasant Grove here. I believe it's the 16th. I could be wrong about that date. Uh, um, we're excited to be back on our home court. Uh, I was telling the guys yesterday, uh, we haven't lost a home home game in two years, which is pretty special. Um, I, and, you know, that's something that I'm proud of the guys for really protecting their home court. And we do a really good job on the road, too. So we got some challenging uh, teams with Jesuit and Guyers of the world that are coming here to Sulphur Springs. So uh, we got to defend our court. All right. I know you're happy to be in that gym. Uh, you, uh, you told me one time I think you prefer practice to games. I do. Uh, I, it's just... To me, that's where you really grow as a team and you get to teach. I love teaching. Um, in a game, you're not really teaching, you're showing what you know. Um, but, but in practice, you get to break down and teach kids why we do stuff. And um, that, to me, that's really the, the special part about this job. I think anybody can coach in a game, but you know, the, the teams that really make um, strides and that are championship contenders really take practice like it's a game and they learn and they value every one of those days that they have. Uh, everybody I talk to, the same thing. Can't wait for Cipolletta's basketball. Yeah, well, it's not Cipolletta's basketball for sure. It's these guys, but uh, we're really excited. And uh, like I said, uh, it's the uh, best time of the year for us. And uh, we appreciate all the support. Um, come on out and support these guys. They've been working really hard since um, back uh, March after we lost in the, the semifinals. They, they, they have a chip back on their shoulder, and you know, uh, we're hoping good stuff. The Wildcats will be having uh, those road scrimmages on November 9th and November 12th. They open the regular season on November 16th in that Cowtown showdown against Decatur, the number seven ranked team in Class 4A. The Wildcats home opener will be on November 19th against Pleasant Grove. And that's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everybody.